Hello again, and welcome back to our series on creating chord generators in Reactor. In the previous video, I designed the GUI for a chord generator that is inspired by the existing module in Ableton Live. And in this video, I'll show how we can take that GUI and connect it to our MIDI stream and then finally I'll show you how to connect everything up inside of Ableton um, to generate some chords. So to start with um, I'm just using the same ensemble that we finished the last tutorial with and the only difference here is that I've added some new labels for our notes and that's it. So first of all I want to mention that whenever we receive a new MIDI note we want to read 12 values out of our event table. In order to do this, I'm going to raise the number of voices in our ensemble to 12. So when we receive a C note, we want to uh, read all of the values in the whole C column here, and etc. Next, I'm going to create a new macro and name it MIDI. And this is where we'll put our note pitch and MIDI gate inputs and we'll do a little bit of manipulation before using them to read values from our event table. So I'll grab a note pitch from the MIDI menu and I'm going to send it through a modulo module and we're going to modulo by a value of 12 which is the number of notes in an octave so this is going to split our note in a way that makes it easy for us to know which pitch is being played, C, C sharp, etc. So coming out of the div output, we're going to get the octave. And coming out the mod output, we're going to get a number from 0 to 11 that symbolizes a note between C and B starting at C equals 0, C sharp equals 1, D equals 2, etc. And as I press new notes on my keyboard, you see that we can use this to split the value into an octave and a note. So this is pretty useful because we're going to use the note value to read out from our event table that we created previously. And we'll use the uh, div output to generate a series of values that will eventually become our pitches, as we'll see in a minute. So I'll take the octave amount and multiply it by 12. All of this stuff is monophonic so far, by the way. We only want to be able to accept one note at a time. I'm not trying to make a chord generator that can play multiple chords at once. So our mod output can be led directly to the X input of our event table. And we'll hook that up shortly. The next thing I want to do is use a voice info module to help generate the pitches that we're going to end up playing. So we have the base value of our octave that we calculated by multiplying the div output by 12. And now I just want to add a polyphonic value here that's going to take that monophonic value and turn it into 12 different values. So you can see our, um, if we take the V output of a voice info and subtract one from it, we're going to get uh, 12 voices that range in value from 0 to 11. So then we can then take this value and add it to our base octave value, and you see we get um, our 12 voices starting at the base of our octave and counting upwards. So that's pretty cool and very um, useful way to use the voice info module. And so those 12 values that we just calculated for the um, pitches starting at the base octave value are the potential notes that could be part of the chord that we are playing. 
All right, so we want to use the voice info module to read out the y values of our table as well. And it's tempting just to use these values going from 0 to 11. Um, and that'll read out the whole column depending on what the x value is. So if x value is 0 and the y value ranges from 0 to 11, then we're just reading out the whole column of the C note. And if x is equal to 1, then we'd read out the whole column of the C sharp. The problem with this is, is you may remember that last time we kind of had to invert the y values of the event table because they started at the top and went down and I wanted to start at the bottom and go up, which is just a little awkward and weird. I don't know why it's designed that way, but it is. So we just need to take these values that range from 0 to 11 and we want them to arrange from 11 counting down to 0 instead. So this is easy enough to do. We're going to take our polyphonic signal that already ranges from 0 to 11 and we're going to subtract it from the value 11 which I'll get out of the voice info module by taking the number of voices and subtracting one from it. So what we've accomplished so far is when we receive a new note we will decide which x and y positions to read from the event table. And actually the y positions are constant, they're always going to be the same. And so the next thing I want to do is create an output that's going to give all of our potential pitches and create an output that triggers reading from the event table. We have the x and y value set up, but we still need a trigger event to read that value. So we can create a new input or output port and name it pitch and connect it to our um, signal that we've already created that is for the potential pitches that could be part of our chord. Next let's create a gate and on a new MIDI gate I want to store the value of that gate so we know if we're turning notes on or off and once we've done that we can read uh, from the event table. So I'm going to create an order module with two outputs for the gate and I'm going to give the first output the uh, second position beneath the pitch and the last one will be the fifth position and we can name the last one R. Okay so we've created our pitch, our gate, and our X, Y, and R outputs and we can connect the last three to their counterparts in the event table. And that's going to read the values we want from the event table when we receive a new note. Next up, I want to take the value coming out of our event table. And anything that's a 1 is going to be turned on or turned off, depending on um, whether we're receiving a gate on or event or a gate off event. And it doesn't seem to be working right now. Let's see. And the problem is that we have a polyphonic gate value here. And so you see when we get a gate, it's only reading out from one of the voices. So if we set this to mono instead, when the monophonic signal arrives at the polyphonic event table, then that mono signal gets copied for every voice and we read from all 12 values at once and we can check to see that that works. So playing the C note now, you can see I'm getting a 1 on the 1st, the 5th, and the 8th um, voices there, which is going to correspond to being a major scale. Next up we can add a note, pitch, and gate MIDI out module. And we can connect our calculated pitches directly to the pitch input. And the gate value coming out of our MIDI is going to be stored in a value that gets triggered by the values coming out of our event table. So coming out of our event table, uh, we'll separate. Anything greater than 0 is going to trigger the value module. 
So only the voices that are turned on will actually have gates that get sent to the note pitch out module. So I'm about to get into music theory a little bit here, and I apologize for that. But um, if you're not familiar with it, um, we have a whole section of music theory tutorials at uh, ADSR. Um, so check those out. They're free. Uh, they're very good. And uh, they really will help you understand some of the things that I do here if you're not familiar with music theory already. And it's just too much stuff to really go over in a video like this. It would take me, you know, at least an hour to go over all the necessary music theory stuff. But basically, I'm going to create a whole bunch of chords that are a part of the C major scale. Now, on the C major scale, um, we can use the notes C, D, E, F, G, A, and B, no sharps or flats. So, um, so for notes C and C sharp, we'll just give them a C major. For notes D and D sharp, we'll give them an E minor or a D minor. Uh, for note E, we will give them an E minor, and so on and so forth. And eventually, we're going to hit a spot though when we get to the F major scale, where the notes in the F major are F, A, and C where we've kind of wrapped back around to the bottom. You see um, that C note that we have at the bottom there. Really, we want that C to be higher in pitch than the F note. And the way we have things set up right now, they are not. And the way to change this is we're going to take our X value, and we're going to compare it to our polyphonic voices here, ranging from 0 to 11. And if x is greater than that value, then we'll simply add 12 to that pitch. Um, and so that just is wrapping us up to the next octave. So our C was an octave lower than we wanted it to be in the F major scale. And this is just going to take that and say, hey, if we received an F note, then that means the C wants to be higher in pitch than the F. So we take that value and add 12 to it, and raise it by an octave. Looks like got some mono poly conflict here. What's going on? Oh, I see. I copied a monophonic <clears throat> note uh, multiplication that can be poly, actually. All right, so. Now you can see we're adding 12 to the bottom voices, which are the ones that are below the incoming pitch. And you can see here that our um, lower voices are getting raised in pitch to match what's happening with our incoming values. All right, so that pretty much sums up the building process. And I want to add snapshots and some more stuff in a future video, but right now I just want to test that everything works. So inside Ableton, I'm going to load up our ensemble. And again, we don't have snapshots, so I'm just going to have to enter all this stuff again really quick. I'm just going to enter all the chords that exist in the C major scale. So that's C major, D minor, E minor, F major, uh, G major, and we'll wait a minute here because we want have yeah and anything that's not a part of the C scale is just getting the nearest chord We've got a minor and the B is a diminished chord all right so next I'm gonna load up a copy of contact and you can use anything here that is capable of accepting uh, polyphonic MIDI data, but contact is a particularly good option because they've got lots of pianos, which are really good for um, chord progressions, of course. And so we can just load in whatever piano sound you want here. And in the MIDI from column down here, I want to choose uh, the first MIDI uh, lane and then you want to choose in the second drop down menu 
uh, reactor 6 and you want to set the monitor to in now I'm just going to set up a basic 1, 4, 6, 5 chord progression which you'll probably recognize because it's in about a million pop songs Alright, so in the next video I we'll want to show how we can add a transpose knob, which will be really simple. So we can create a C major and then say, hey, maybe I want that to be D major, E major, or whatever. Um, and I'll show you how we can add snapshots and anything else that comes uh, to my mind as a good addition between now and then I'll probably add in as well. Alright, thank you for watching. Once again, this is Salamander Anagram.